Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to Override's Redstone Tutorials. In this one, we're going to be going over how to make a memory lock system out of your previous locking mechanism. Now, as you remember in previous episodes, we built this uh, locking mechanism using four locks, or, or four switches. And one problem that can sometimes arise is, say if this is a building that's going to be your base, or some kind of a vault that you're going to be spending a lot of time in, uh, if you put in your combination, let's see, so it was this one and the first one. You put in your combination, and when you go to open the door and you walk inside, your combination is still left outside here. Uh, so anybody walking by could see the combination, remember it, and then when you leave, they can jump in there, get all your stuff, bad things could happen. So one way to combat this is to try to make a system that once you enter in your, your combination, you can release the combination, but the memory is still stored in your system. This can be done by using an RS NOR latch. Uh, a lot of different ways to build this can be found on the Minecraft wiki. I'm going to do a quick one that seems to be really easy, at least for me. You make your input coming in this way, and then you have your two torches almost at the same spot, but they're facing opposite directions. And then you connect these with redstone. See that one turns off. Now you gotta be really careful with these because sometimes uh, it could turn into some kind of a loop or whatnot. But this is how you design it. So, what's basically going on here, it's a little bit confusing, but it's almost like two weird gates connected to each other. You have your input coming in this way. This is what's gonna happen when your combination is correct. It's just gonna come in this way. Now to reset this, you give an input here. As you see, this side turns turns off, this side turns on. If I get rid of this torch, it still stays on. The state is still the same. If I give an input on this side, they switch. Now this side is on, and this side is off. These are what are known as your cues. This is your cue normal, and this is your inverse cue. That's just the output of whatever signals you're trying to put in here. Since this is your input switch, this is what's going to trigger this to turn on. So when the combination is correct, it's going to turn this system on. Now when once you're inside, you want to reset the combination, and so you'll give an input on this side, and that'll reset everything back to normal, so that's off and nobody can come back into your base. Alright. Well, that's all for the explaining. Let's get down and make this. We're going to do a, a, a little modification to our previous circuit, so we don't have to build anything new. Okay, so, this is giving a true output, which means the combination is correct. And you can remember, this is our button. It's connected to, so when the button is pushed, these are going to work. So what we're basically just going to do is get rid of this and put a little step in between these two. So this step, we're just going to build our or latch. There we go. Just like we did before. Oops. Let's go there. Let's go there. And that should be it. Yep, connected in, and there's our output. So, this combination is correct. Ooh, actually, I just realized if you build this backwards, it inverts them and makes it easier instead of having to think all the way around, so I'm going to do that real quick. Little debugging. Sheep, sheep, you're in the way. Sheep, there, thank you. Okay, that's much better. So, when our combination is true, it'll light up this part, and then this will go into the gate with our button. So, we're just going to get this out of the way. Let's see, we're going to have to make it so that the button goes there. Um, actually, it'd be easier. 
because we don't want that to touch this anyway, because that messes it up when we get that phaser like we did before. Okay, that should work, and we'll just move that. Um, I'll put something over here so that blocks that from going through. Okay. So then we're going to put an AND gate here so that when the memory is true and the button is true, the door will open. Pretty simplistic. Ooh, just saw... Okay, no, it's okay, I can fix that. <laughs> yeah, this is just constant, you know, you have to keep everything in, in check. That's connected to that. Connect these over to here. Yes, great. That should be perfect. Alright, let's test it out real quick. So, this is the correct combination that's in our system. We turn off the combination. Then we press the button. Door didn't open. Alright, let's see what we did wrong here. Let's see, our button is connected. Ooh, I have an idea of what's going on. I bet this is too long. Yep, there's not even an inverter here. Okay, so all we have to do is give our double inverter thing. And it should be a quick fix. Oh, door opened, I heard that, so that means it's long enough. Door should close. There we go. Okay, test trial number two. This fog. There we go. No laggy. Okay, so correct combination. Good. That is a correct combination. Now we get rid of the combination. Press the button, and the door opens and it shuts, which is great. Now, what we have to do is, once we're inside the facility, a way to make like a locking mechanism. So, let's say you're gonna walk in, and this is like your main building right here. So, we're gonna put a little switch right here. I should interact with that. Uh, let's build a quick switch. Alright, this is our little. Oops. We don't throw the switch, we have to place the switch. There we go. And hopefully. I don't think that's going to mess with the wires up there. Nope, it doesn't mess with those wires. So this is our reset switch. Now, that's going to mess with those wires, but... What we have to do is... Yeah, we can get it right here. Great. So those wires are on. Good. Now we just got to connect these all the way through. Now, a really cool method I just saw was how to make your wires so that they don't touch each other. Which I can't do it in this situation, but... Say if you have two wires right next to each other, and you can't really help putting them next to each other. <laughs> Oops, fell through. You can make it so that, say, your wires go this way. and then you just place these blocks here. And what happens is the wires can't go through the block, so you can pass wires right next to each other, just different layers. And that's just a little something to help you out if you want to carry like a bunch of different data streams or whatever. It's completely up to you. Uh, let's repair the landscape. Okay. This is going to go all the way... Oop, ran out of wire. So, do a little extender. Right now we're extended. That's why I like to keep my my values on for when I'm building this, because then when it runs out, you really know that it's it's ran out. All right, and it should be just long enough. And yes, perfect. Now, what's interesting about this now is that when that lever is on, not only is the combination reset, but it's also locked from the inside. So here I'll give you an example put in the correct combination. Even if the combination is still in there, push the button, the door will not open. If we leave the value in there, the door will not open. It's, co it's completely locked from the inside. It's only until we release this lever that the memory lock is able to accept new information. There we go. Walk in. Come in. Lock the door. Do your business. Unlock the door. Come out. Push the button to leave, and that is our memory lock door system. 
If you have any more questions on this, uh, feel free to comment on it. Um, I'm going to be releasing these maps uh, for download if anybody wants to like actually get a working demonstration of it that they can work with. And other than that, that's all I have to say for the memory lock door. See you later.